comedian David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. So I was watching the news today and they were having a candlelight vigil for the victims of the stabbing in Bondi. Thousands of people went down to Bondi Beach to pay their respects. The Prime Minister was there. Every cunt had candles. And I'm watching it. And all I can feel is like resentment. I just feel like, why this? Why this particular thing? I felt the exact same thing years ago when there was a terror attack in Sydney down in Martin Place at, what was it? The fucking chocolate shop. The Lint Chocolate Shop. That's, that's it. Cafe. And I can't remember the exact details, but it was like called a terrorist attack. It was fucking all over the news. And then it comes out in the wash that I think two people died, but they were shot by the police when they barged in and the terrorist was shot. There was a siege, but he didn't actually kill anyone. Anyway, there was an overblown reaction. Like, the entire Martin place was filled with flowers. People were, like, in tears and shit like that. It was crazy. I was like, why this? Why this particular fucking thing? There's horrors on the news every fucking day. There's horrors everywhere. And you don't even beat a fucking eyelid. But this particular thing... And at the time, I was like, it's just a media fucking build-up. People just wanted to go there, put flowers to feel good about themselves. That's what I thought. But I am a jaded, bitter old cunt. So I don't really know what motivates people. So I was watching this thing tonight and I was getting the same feeling. And I was just trying to process it. By process it, I mean process my resentment for people caring so much about this thing and not about everything else. And then I was like, all right, at least they're caring about something. (laughs) At least they fucking are not completely emotionally fucking dead. At least something has moved them. That's good. That's a good sign. It's a good sign that there's still some fucking empathy out there somewhere. It may be misdirected at times, but at least it's there. If it's not there, that's a bigger problem. And I remembered a listener sent me a message after the Bondi attack and I read it and I was like, yeah, that's probably not where you want to be. So I'll read out the message she sent. This is a listener from LA. She's like, was just listening to your talk about the Bondi stabbing and it's kind of funny because my first reaction when hearing about it was, who fucking cares? How is this even news? But then my second reaction was realizing how completely psychotic America is that five people being stabbed doesn't even move the needle. And that's what I was thinking. I'm like, at least they care. At least they care. At least it's something. At least cunts are going down. They're buying flowers. They're holding candles. Even if it's all for show or whatever. It at least shows there's still some heart. I think. It's Bondi. So it's also possible everyone's there trying to get on camera. I don't know. (laughs) I wouldn't like to scratch the surface of these people's motivation. You know what I mean? But let's just say it's empathy and heart. Anyway, I'll continue. A week ago, here in LA, a woman stabbed her boyfriend to death in the early morning hours, then took her 8-month-old and 9-year-old and pushed them out of the car while driving down the freeway, then committed suicide by driving her Porsche into a tree at 100 miles per hour. And the investigators determined that she did it because we had a solar eclipse that day And she believed there was something evil about it. And the only thing out of the ordinary about that story is the solar eclipse. (laughs) Those don't happen very often. That's how fucking nuts we Americans are. And I was like, yeah, 
that's not a healthy place to be. The violence in the US is, it's not even like natural violence in the US as well. It's like evil violence, like comic book violence. It's sinister as fuck. And then the listener, and she's probably not going to be too happy I'm reading this out. Maybe she is, but she's anonymous anyway. I know she definitely wouldn't want me to say her name, but she sent me a poem she said she wrote years back. What did she say? I wrote this poem some years back. It's basically how I feel about America. Very few feelings of endearment. So I read the poem and I liked the poem. So I'm just going to fucking read it out. All right. I know you love an email or a letter or a message from the listeners. So you're going to love the poem. Here we go. Please take a seat and lend me your ear. I've got a story you never knew you were dying to hear. There's much to be said in a story so true. The setting is life. The subject is you. Don't think twice. Don't think even once about the smoke and the mirrors or the webs being spun. Just run the same race as your parents before. They had so much less. You are destined for more. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. This is the pretense your life's meant to keep. I know it may seem that a game's being played where the rules are unclear, but just play anyway. There's no lesson to be learned in a story with no plot, but what's it to you if it makes sense or not? You live in a country, the red, white and blue, the best in the world where dreams can come true. For the tired and poor and those abroad too, well maybe not them, but definitely you. Don't feel any pressure, that isn't the point but you better succeed or you will disappoint. You may get weary while you top all the rest, but a crown that gets heavy is a crown nonetheless. So stand on your feet and be on your way. Squeeze every last dollar right out of this day. You're stronger than you know and braver than you seem. When all's said and done, you'll see what I mean. You'll be so filled with fear that you can't even scream while chasing the ghosts down the halls of the American dream. I like that a lot. And that will do for tonight. And I'll see you the fuck later.